When Donovan opened his eyes in the morning, he remembered that it was a very big day and he had a very big job to do. But first, he had to tumble out of bed the minute Grandpa woke him up and not turn over and shut his eyes or hide his head under the blankets or go back to sleep for even just five more minutes. He had to race downstairs and give Sheba her breakfast and gobble up all the pancakes that Grandma served him and slurp down all the juice that Grandpa poured him and not drop his fork or spill his syrup or make any kind of fuss. He had to rush back upstairs and wash his hands and clean his nails and scrub his face and brush his teeth and rinse his mouth and comb his hair and not leave the bathroom a great big mess with water splashed everywhere and dirty towels all over the floor. He had to zip up his new pants, button up his new shirt, slip into his new jacket, buckle on his new shoes, clip on his new tie, and stay inside and not wander off with his cousin Benjamin, or run out into the yard and let Sheba jump all over him with her big muddy paws. Oh, no. He had to tuck the little white satin box that Aunt Jennifer gave him into his inside jacket pocket and keep track of it at all times and not shake it or crush it or squash it or lose it no matter what. He had to fly outside the minute he heard Uncle Gregory honk the horn and climb into the big back seat of Uncle Gregory's shiny blue car and squeeze in next to his cousins and sit absolutely still without kicking his feet so his new clothes wouldn't wrinkle and his new shoes wouldn't scuff. He had to be the first one to hop off his seat, scramble out of the car, scurry up some steep steps, hurry through a large sunlit lobby, and dash into a loud, crowded room full of hundreds of grown-ups, all dressed up in their very best clothes. And he had to say hello to every single one of them while they shook his hand, gave him a hug, kissed his cheek, and told him how very handsome he looked on this very big day. He had to take his place with Grandma and Grandpa and Nana and Papa right behind his baby cousin Sienna who had flowers in her hair and flowers on her dress and flowers in a basket looped over her arm. And after he waited and waited and waited and waited, he had to walk, not run, not skip, not hop, not leap, not bounce, not dance down the aisle. He had to stand very, very quietly and not tap his feet or fidget while one grown-up read a poem and another grown-up played the piano and another grown-up sang a song. <coughs> Until Aunt Jennifer told him it was time and then Donovan reached into his inside jacket pocket and took out the little white satin box he had been keeping there and held it in his hand. My precious. He opened the box very carefully. He handed one shiny gold ring to Mommy. He handed one gold shiny ring to Mama. He stood next to both of them without saying a word while they slid the shiny gold rings onto each other's fingers, looked into each other's eyes, said some mushy things to each other, and smiled and laughed and cried. While the tall grown-up in the long black robe said, I now pronounce you wife and wife, Donovan threw his arms around his mother's while everyone clapped their hands and stamped their feet and whipped and whistled and hollered, Hooray! Without the, uh, the jug. Sorry. Hooray! And then after everyone grew quiet, Donovan remembered. There was one more very big job for him to do. You may now kiss the brides. <laughs>